Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your name, Lord. You are worthy, Lord, to be praised. Welcome. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome for all those of you that are just stopping for the first time. You are welcome. You are welcome. Today I will be talking about spiritual attacks. But before I start, I just want to sing a song. To God be the glory. You are welcome once again. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what your worth. Crucified and laid behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. Above all you were crucified behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and fought of me. Above all you were crucified and laid behind the stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall. And thought of me above all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, Lord, dying for me, Lord. Thank you for sharing your blood for us, O oh Lord. So, as I said earlier, I will be talking about spiritual attacks. As we know, the enemy have been attacking us, even though we are Christians. So, I will take reading from the Bible. I will be reading from Ephesians chapter, chapter 5. So, as we know, we are born again believers. Or some of you are born again believers, but are going through some difficult times. You have been being attacked and nothing is going well for you. Although you are a born again believer, the Bible never told us that the enemy will not be attacking us, but he gave us the way out. So I took some example. Anything you see happening from the, like anything that will be happening to you in true life, that thing has already happened in the spiritual life, in the spiritual ground. No matter what, that's why I always say, in your dreams, if you see some things, some, any type of thing like you, even though you don't understand, you must pray against it. 
you must pray against it because the enemy have been using our body like will attack you when you are asleep when you are asleep because when you are asleep you are exposed if you are not a prayerful person that thing have already happened if it is happened physically it ha it had happened already in in the spiritual ground that's why the Lord asks us to take to take we have to fight the Bible say we are not wrestling against flesh and blood we are not wrestling against flesh and blood that's why the Lord have asked me to share my testimony and to talk to people out there because some people might be think, saying, I have heard people say that, that type of thing that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, but that's a lie. It does exist. My life, I went through lots of spiritual attacks and that's what, why the Lord asked me to share my testimony and to help others. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you are saying, like I am a Christian. I am a Christian like I'm a born again believer. And when I got baptized, the Lord have take charge of all my sin and all what the enemy will try and do to me. So I don't have to pray for that and I don't have to worry myself about that and so on and so on. The Bible asks us, we, the Bible is saying like we must pray without ceasing. It's an everyday thing. The scripture told us, they are, the Bible told us like the enemy is just like a roaring lion. That means we have to pray. We must pray at all times. You might be saying, oh, I'm a Christian and I have already accepted Christ in my life. That doesn't change anything. The enemy will still attack you because of that calling, that special calling that the Lord has on your life. So you must pray at all times. You have accepted Christ in your life. God will be, the Spirit of God, promised to be with us each and every day. Each and every day. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit will be working with our spirit. The Spirit of God will be working in our spirit, in your spirit. But you must know we have the body and the soul. The body and the soul the enemy will be act, like attacking us through our body because he want his own he is after our soul god wants to save our soul and the enemy also is after our soul if the flesh the body your mind is push, pushing you to sin what can it it can affect you spiritually because your spirit will be going like in all sorts of thinking and desires and everything like that. But your body will be the one reacting and your soul like will be getting dirty and darkness will be all over it. The enemy is after your soul. The enemy is after our soul. That's why the, the sin is there. That's why they are sin. Like when we sin, the, the Bible is saying like when you sin, like you are living in fornication, you are sin, sinning uh, like your body against your own body. It's your body. God wants to save your soul. So that's why we have to be repenting like if you see that you have done something or you, even though you think, just think about something, you must repent yourself. 
when you will like we will be thinking of something like if you are someone without a husband and you'll be having all sorts of desires and even though you are married you will be thinking of some other things like you know it is not right for you to do it is not right for you to do and you will be thinking about that you will be opening doors for the enemy to come in the enemy cannot do any harm to us if we have all those shut we are living a sanctified life the enemy there is no way that the enemy can enter to do any harm the enemy is after your soul the enemy that body it is just flesh it is just flesh and blood the enemy is after your soul so there are some people that have been so attacked when you are sleeping you must look and see your way of living that doesn't mean if you are a christian you will not have attacks you we will always have we will all i myself i always have attacks but god have the last say we must you must like look at your way of living your way of speaking your way of thinking all these are even what we are watching what type of movies and so on and so on these are those that the enemy can use to enter our body like to play in our spirit in our mind to put confusion to put corals and all sorts of things we must be careful what we do what we say what we watch we must must close excuse me we must have all those clues in our life by praying fasting a christian life there is nothing else nothing else to do by praying and fasting some people are having so much like having so many attacks they cannot even sleep they cannot even sleep at night they are, they are afraid to go and sleep they are always having nightmares these are not nightmares is the enemy working the enemy is working in your life you must have a prayerful life you must repent you must like look for deliverance you must look for deliverance these are not the enemy want to discourage you the enemy want to keep like draw you back the enemy is trying to steal from you the enemy is trying to prevent you to get into what god want you to go the enemy want to steal our blessing some attacks people might have when you are sleeping you seem like people is stealing from you if you see people are stealing from you your bag or whatever they are stealing from you the enemy is stealing something from you the enemy is stealing things from you if it happens spiritually it might happen physically if you don't pray against it or if you are sure like the enemy has already stolen from you you must claim back what the enemy has stole from you god have given us power over all these things the bible is there the word of god is there god has given us everything completely completely out of his word we just have to live a sanctified life there is no other way there is no magical way or whatever first you must watch your relationship with god what type of relationship that you have with god how you are living your lifestyle your everyday lifestyle because the enemy will be using the way that you live to attack you the enemy will be if you are still in his like everything you used to do before you know christ before you became a christian and you are still living that way you belongs to him so he will not let you be in peace the enemy knows that you have a special calling upon your life and god like want to use you as a pastor or whatever to sing whatever but he will try 
anything to block you and he will be stealing from you while you are asleep he will come to steal what God has given to you we have that parable in the Bible that talk about when the enemy came and like people like during the night like like when you heard the word of God excuse me when you heard the word of God and if you don't understand it, what will happen the enemy will be taking it away from you and when you hear that word if you don't like water it and nourish it and take care of it it will die it will dry up it will die so your spiritual life have to you must take care of your spiritual life okay so if you don't take care of your spiritual life and you still do what you used to do while you were still on the other side you have to repent from your sins because the enemy will draw you back. The enemy will put you at his service. You will be thinking you are working for God. No, you will not be working for God because you still belong to him. You still belong to him. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is there to lead us. The Spirit of God is there to lead you. If you are not Walking in the spirit of God, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says, The spirit and the flesh, they doesn't get along, they don't have the same desire. If we walk according to the flesh, the enemy can use us easily, easily to do his will and to get us out of the plan of God. So that's why we cannot walk according to the flesh like when you didn't know God. If you say you are a Christian, you are a child of God, you have many things to change. You know your life, you know what you are doing, where you are going, how you are living and everything. You must examine yourself. Every day we have to examine ourselves, Lord, what is going on or whatever. And you know what you are doing. If you are doing something wrong, if you are fornicating or adultery, whatever, you have to repent from your sins. You must repent. You cannot serve, you cannot be walking on two roads. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, as we can see, we can be born again believers. And you can be still living in sin. Give the enemy what belongs to him. That's an everyday thing. We must give the enemy what belongs to him. We all know what doors we have opened. I will take an example. Before you were a Christian, you used to go dancing and parties and everything like you used to have friends that used to smoke and drink in alcohol and all this type of thing. Can you still follow this, these friends? You will not vex with them, but you don't have to follow them. If you are still following them, if you are still going to parties, like whenever they have a birthday party, they will invite you and you will go. What type of music you will be hearing? You will be dancing and you'll be drinking your, your champagne, your wine, and you'll get like drunk. And Are you a born again believer? Are you a born again believer? We must ask ourselves these questions. We must ask ourselves these questions. Am I a born again believer? Am I a born again believer? As I said, Galatians told us, Galatians 5 verse 16 and 17. You cannot walk according to your flesh and please God. You cannot go and do anything that you wish. And like you say, you are a born again Christian. You cannot live like that and please God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, as I said, I will be talking, I will be talking about spiritual warfare and spiritual attacks. How the enemy will attack us. It's not because you are a born again believer, the enemy will not come after you. No. The more you pray, the more the enemy will try his tricks on you. But having a prayerful life, it's a very good thing. It will protect us. Having a good relationship with God, even though we are not perfect, you will get like the enemy will not have victory over you. We could be bishop, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and so on and so on and so on. The enemy will still attack you. It's not the title or title of a prophet or a pastor that will save you from anything. It's the relationship you have with God. It's being true and have a prayerful life. Prayerful life, you know, we must be fasting, praying, and being in the presence of God. We must be true in all we do. We must be true. You cannot be like you have a Bible going to church and everything people will be hearing you see. And when you are at your home, like you will be living a double life. The enemy, he knows you. He knows you. And God will expose you sooner or later. You must have a spiritual life. It depends on you. The enemy will attack you and they will bring victory. Of, like they will, they will take from you what God has given to you, what God wants to give to you. So be vigilant and we must pray at all times. So we have some example in the Bible, how the Lord, the Lord has been talking to us. In Galish, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. There, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. is saying, Therefore, be imitators of God as their children, Walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Christ. Christ gave his life for us. He said he is the way, the truth, and the light. We cannot say that we are Christians and like you want to live your own life, your old life you used to live. You must be renewed. My God, my King. You can read the whole chapter. Ephesians chapter 5, you can read that chapter. It will help you. It will help you. It will help you very much. So as I was saying, we are being attacked. But the enemy cannot bring, bring victory on us because we know God has given us the victory. Verse Ephesians chapter 5, still chapter 5, verse 6. 6 to 15. You can read it. I will not be reading it. You can read it. From verse 10 is saying to us, we must have the, like, verse 10 down, have, we must have the whole armor of God. That means God has already given us everything that we need to fight against the enemy. The enemy is not, we are not wrestling, the Bible said, against flesh, against flesh and blood. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. So Ephesians verse 6 is saying, 
Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wolf of God comes upon the son of disobedience. Don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let yourself be deceived. If you are a born again believer, you must change your way of living. The wolf of God can come upon your life because of disobedience. You can read the chapter as I said. Verse 7 is saying, Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 8 is saying that, For you were once darkness, but now you are light. You are light in the Lord. Because we will be making one with God. We must walk like children that are in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must walk as children of light. Verse 9 is saying, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all good, goodness, righteousness, and faith, and truth, excuse me, and truth. Hallelujah. Righteousness. All goodness, righteousness, and truth. You cannot be trying to deceive others. You are only deceiving yourself. You must walk as children of light, the Bible is saying. God has given us wisdom. In verse Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 is saying, God has given us wisdom. God has given his children wisdom. So before I finish, I will talk about something someone told me. Because as we know, you can be like attack, attack during your sleep. It can happen in broad daylight. There are people that are hearing things or seeing things and they are so scared and but when we are asleep the enemy will always try to do things to us so i was talking to that lady and she told me what she saw in a dream she told me in that dreams not only one thing she told me but she told me in her dream she, she saw that she was walking and after someone came to her and that person stole her bag that person stole everything that she had the, and that person ran away but in the dream she saw that she was walk, running after, after that person to collect her bag she kept on running and running and running and like it was under the woods like it was even during the night and when she reached when she arrived in a certain area she saw her bag but the bag was empty the bag was empty so i told her all these type of dreams they are not normal the enemy is trying to steal from you. The enemy is stealing something from you. So after she told me another dream, one day she told me like she saw that she got married to a very nice man. She always getting married in her dreams, but never in real life. Like no man will not even see her. When people will come to her, is like people that cannot do anything for her, but will never will never talk about marriage never talking about marriage 
that is something that is evil. You cannot get married when you are asleep. In your dreams, you are getting married, and in real life, you are single. You are single, and everyone that will be coming to you, like they are already married, or they just want to have a sexual relationship with you, they themselves, the enemy, have sent them to steal from you, to turn you away from God. To turn you away from God. They will be stealing from you by having sexual relationship with you. If you are a Christian and like you will be praising God for a time and you will be living a sanctified life and after temptation come and you find someone you will be sleeping with that person, the enemy will be the one sending that person. That person will not get married to you. That person will be stealing something from you. Taking you out of sanctification, stealing what God wants to give you, what God wants to show you, turning you away from God. So that's what I wanted to say. When you accept Christ, we must, we must crucify our flesh, all the desires. It is not easy, but it is an everyday lifestyle for born-again believers. The enemy will try anything to turn you from the will of God. He will try everything in his power. But the word of God has given us all what we need. If you are reading the Bible, Psalms, Psalms 91, God has promised us his protection. You must read that psalm before you go to sleep. You must always pray before you go to sleep. I myself, if I were, if sometimes I just go to sleep, like I will say just a little prayer. But sometimes I will be attacked in my sleep. Sometimes you are so tired. <laughs> a Christian must never be too tired to pray. The enemy will attack you. If you don't pray at all, you say you're a Christian and you're going out with your friends, the same friends you had while you were still living according to the world, or to all like all what they do you were doing it and you are still doing it you need to repent so to confirm all what I'm saying to you the Bible has all the way for us step by step how we must live so I take an example from Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 hallelujah to God be the glory I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed but be transformed be transformed by the renewing of your mind but because the enemy will be using passing through our mind all sorts of thinking and like the temptation will come and everything and you will be if you don't send it out and rebuke it the enemy will be hallelujah the enemy will be using our mind and the enemy can use your mind to destroy your destiny. And you can be a weapon against your own destiny. You can destroy your own destiny. If you don't know how to pray against the enemy, because everything he will be doing is spiritually, and if you don't know how to wrestle against that, you will be accepting all the negative thinking and thoughts you will have and you can be the one destroying your own destiny so verse 2 is saying we must be transformed we must be renewed in our mind that you may prove what is that good 
unacceptable and perfect will of God. If you don't know what is good, acceptable, the perfect will of God for yourself, who else can know for you? If something comes, like you start thinking something that is negative, you know that way of thinking, it doesn't please God and it doesn't come from God. You just have to rebuke it and work on yourself. Whenever you receive something that is negative or anything, you just have to rebuke it because the enemy will be playing with our mind so that we can destroy our own calling and our own blessings. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. My God, you are good. Lord, I bless your name, Lord. I know you will help someone out there. I know someone will receive what I'm saying. I know someone will receive. You will be blessed. You must work on your own self. You must go fasting and praying and ask God to direct you. Ask God to direct you. You cannot live a, like a sanctified life if you don't know how to stay away from sin if you don't know how to stay away from sin so with the lord gave us weapon to fight against the wills of the enemy all his tricks all what he will try to do Ch ephesians chapter 5 verse 10 downwards but i will read from 11 for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It is spiritual. It is something spiritual. We must pray and we must rebuke. We must let ourselves be led by the Holy Spirit so that He will the Holy Spirit will teach us to pray. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It is not physically. As I said earlier on, it starts spiritually. And the enemy will, your life, like you will just get fed up with life because the enemy has already worked your life in the spiritual grounds to block you, to steal your happiness from you, your prosperity from you, your spiritual life from you and everything like he would just want to empty you with all your blessings that the Lord has for you. God has given us everything. We must do it with faith. We must pray with faith. We must have faith. I will share with you. I wanted to do it on another video, but I will share with you what happened to me after I made a video. I prayed on a video if you haven't yet subscribed, you can subscribe. I prayed for the children that will be returning to school. And after two days, I had a terrible attack on my life. I never saw that happen to me. The spiritual attacks, they are real. In my life, all my life, I have been very much attacked. And more when I am sleeping. But God has always given me victory. Thank you, Lord. I know I'm covered. My life is in your hands, Lord. I trust and I depend on your protection. The Lord gave me Psalms, 20, Psalms 23 and 91. And I used to say it all day, all day during the night. I used to say it many times before I go to sleep. And even when I saw I could not fall asleep, sometimes I will be just reading, like repeating these Psalms. Until, like, I don't know anything, uh, and I, that time I, I, will, I would be sleeping. <laughs> so, I will tell you what happened. After I finished making that video, two days after, I saw someone I knew from afar with four dogs, but I wasn't afraid. I didn't feel the need to be afraid of these dogs because I thought 
because I saw that person that was there with the dogs, I knew him. So as I went closer, I saw that they were not dogs. I don't know if they transform or whatever, but I saw they were no longer dogs. Maybe afar off, I saw them as dogs, but it was they were wolves. Four wolves. But they were so angry at me. Or angry and just. But they were barking like dogs. I don't know if they are doing the same type of thing. I don't know. Yes, they were barking like dogs. But oh my God. It's, as I'm explaining to you, I can see that they were barking like dogs. But when I watched them, they were wolves. But there was one among them. There were one among them. It was like more angry than the others. And it attacked me. That was the first time I saw something attack me and the dog bite me, that wolf. So I said, I, I didn't have any time to react. And I saw that thing just kept on biting me, biting me all over my leg. After when I watched, I saw like blood was coming out all directions. Blood was coming out. I said, oh my God, how can that thing do that to me? And I saw like, I, I went on my business and I don't know what happened in that dream. But after I had, like the dream had two, was separate. Like I had a blank, I didn't know anything else. And after I saw, I was walking on that road all alone and i saw one of that wolf the one that i saw the one that attacked me in that dream was alone and very sick very very sick like it couldn't well walk so i said oh you didn't know that my blood was a poison to you you thought you would bite me and you would go free? Well, that will teach you a lesson. You didn't know? And like it was almost dead. But it, it was still angry at me. It tried to attack me a second time. But I saw, look and I saw a, a piece of wood, very big size. I went and I took it and I just started. When it approached me, I just started hitting that wolf. I just started hitting that wolf on its head. I just knock it all over. I just strike him and all again and again and again until there was no life in it. In it. I just... I, I said, oh, you came back a second time. But the second time is not like the first time. But you didn't know my blood was a poison to you? And that's when I woke up. But during the day, I felt myself bad. When I woke up in the morning, I said, Oh my God, but what's going on, Lord? I know I'm praying and everything like that. I know it was an attack, but the Lord showed me why. I say, Lord, and I, because I, saw, I never saw that before that something had like get through when they approach me when always i used to pray and that thing would like just disappear or sing or praise the lord or whatever speak in tongues and that thing that power would go but in that dream i didn't have the time to say anything and that would just but the lord knows why there was something like the lord wanted me to know so when I woke up, I said, oh my God, I'm, I'm not happy about that dream. I'm not happy about that dream. I'm not happy about it. And I felt in my heart, Vicky, what is wrong with you? You saw that first thing that it, what happened to you? But didn't you see what happened after? And I said, and I start praying and I say, God, thank you. And thank you because that dream will not spoil my my day i know i said you want to spoil my day but you cannot spoil my day and i said this is the day that the lord has made 
I will rejoice and be glad in it. And that's how I start all about um, doing whatever I had to do. But to make that a video, I, I couldn't make that video after. But I, I just kept on praying and later that day I made another video. To God be the glory. People of God, that's how, how it happened. Sometimes I just have attacks also. That's only one of them. So when you see anything in your dreams, no matter what, you must pray against it. You must rebuke it. You must rebuke it. Because God will never give the enemy victory over us. Never. So that's why I will be saying goodbye for today. Be blessed and stay blessed. Remember, you cannot be strong by on your own. Put the Lord in all what you do. Trust in Him. Live a faithful life. Transform your life. Turn away from sin. Turn away from sin. And to God be the glory. Bye-bye for now.